So you've heard this text a hundred times. You know the story of the of the um, <coughs> sower and the seed. Wonderful parable that Jesus told. Little education. Jesus told two kinds of parables: comic parables and tragic parables. This is a comic parable. Uh, that is, it's a parable in which uh, a central character sees that tragic and difficult things happen, but in fact uh, is able to live with hope and patience and perseverance toward the future, believing that the universe is a safe place. The tragic character, in the end, is not able to change enough to uh, find the alternative way to live that Jesus is pointing toward and consequently uh, ends up in a very sad place. So the parables offer an alternative view of what is the general view of reality. And the alternative view that is being offered today is in order to grow in life, in order to be a person who is full of life, who can grow all of their life, uh, you need to be receptive. You need to have a soft heart. And that's opposed to the reality, not only now, but that existed in the ancient world, which was if you're going to make it, you better be tough-minded and hard-hearted and you better be able to move ahead and step on whatever people you have to step on to get to where you want to be because you're the one that's going to make your life go. So this is an alternative reality that is presented to us today. He starts with the sower out sowing seed into uh, all kinds of different soil. It lands first on the path which people have walked and trod upon and consequently it is hardened and the seed, like the kids said, can't get down into the soil so it has no chance of, of growing at all. And the question for us um, is, what do we do with our hard hearts? Remember uh, Moses, who is called uh, at the burning bush. When he is called, a particular thing happens. There's a repetition of the word see, and Moses sees what God sees. And what God sees is the suffering of God's children in slavery in Egypt. And so when Moses sees that suffering, Moses is compelled to go to Egypt and bear fruit in his life through God's spirit. So there's two ways to soften your heart, and only two. One is to enter into the experience of suffering, and the other is prayer. Moses entered into the experience of suffering and uh, his heart softened and he bore fruit. Prayer, the problem with prayer is it's like what happened with Moses. When you pray, when you get beyond the laundry list of things that you, know, you want God to do to change the world so your life will be okay and easy, when you get beyond that kind of prayer, uh, you get to the place where Moses was, where you begin to see what God sees in the world. And that is God's children who are suffering. And then your heart softens. A couple of years ago, I took a, uh, a course up at Kripalu, which is uh, a Buddhist um, yoga center in, in Massachusetts. I'm not a yoga kind of a guy. But there was a, there was a uh, fellow who uh, is one of the directors there who had written a book that I really liked and was leading this workshop on it. So I went up for the weekend, knowing that at the beginning of each workshop, they had a half hour of yoga. I thought, yoga shmoga, big deal. I'm a football player. <laughs> you know, that's a wimpy kind of thing. You know, sitting or standing in one position for a while, you know. Big deal, I can handle that. So uh, I went to the 
first workshop, and uh, I got there, you know, everybody was in these little bright lycra yoga outfits. You know, oh, even the guys, you know, they had these wonderful, well, some of them were in a kind of gray, grayish sweatpant color, kind of. Me, I had my street clothes on, you know, I had a sweater and slacks and that. So, uh, big deal. So we went through a couple positions in yoga, and uh, I confess, I did fumble around a little bit, but I felt that I had kind of managed enough kind of stayed into it that nobody was like laughing at the old guy over there. Then we got to the Superman pose. Superman, right? And uh, this is good. Superman. Well, the Superman pose, you lay on your belly on the mat and you lift your arms up in front of you and then you lift your feet and your legs up as high as you can behind you. And then you hold that position. And that position is like Superman flying through the air. I thought, big deal, there's nothing to this. So I, I'm going to do this. And I did it. And I got up. And there I was, Superman, flying over Massachusetts, over Connecticut, into New York City. I was flying in between the skyscrapers. It was a wonderful sight. And then, wham! In my left thigh, my hamstring knotted up. It was as if somebody had taken a knife and went thump, 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 right in my thigh. And it just froze up. And I'm... <laughs> and I'm looking, I don't think anybody knows. And I'm going to just grit my way through this, which I did. I held out. I was one of the last people in that class to give up the pose and relax onto the floor. I did it, and all was fine until the leader said, well, now stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I was a cripple. I tried moving this way. I tried moving that way. I, I couldn't move. Everybody else was getting up. We were starting to go on with the class. This young woman in one of those bright purple like her outfits came home and said, Sir, could I help you? Could, you help? could I give you a little, do you want any help? No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine, I just need a moment here. I'm just not used to this kind of thing. And somehow, without using my left leg, I actually stood up and faked my way through the rest of the yoga stuff. As you might imagine, my heart was softened toward the yoga people. I worked with some of the yoga people. So my heart was soft toward them. I began to understand that they are not wimps, that what they are taking on is actually this marvelous and difficult thing to do. I know it's a silly story, but if you take any other group besides the yoga people and you put them in there, say homeless people, say refugees, say the elderly living in nursing homes, say youngsters in the inner city, and you enter into their suffering in some way, your heart begins to soften. And the love of God can be planted in your heart. But maybe that's not your struggle. Maybe your struggle is that the second one, where the seed falls onto uh, the rock. And the struggle with it falling on the rock, as the kids said, the, the roots don't have anywhere to go to get moisture, to get nourishment that they need to have the plant grow big and strong. So it, the struggle of being on the rock is the struggle of not being able to grow your roots deep. And I think this is a particular problem in our culture. I think in our culture, we love the new thing. Something new comes along, and we just, we abandon the old just like that. And we've got to do this thing. We've got to have this thing. We, we have to find a new relationship. We have to look for a new toy. It's so attractive and shiny and marvelous. And we tend to be looking at the surface of things, 
appearances and wealth and status. But, but you don't grow in the fruit of God's love if you can't dig down deep, let your roots go down deep. It, it takes time. It takes patience. Just by the way, the word patience also has suffering connected. Because patience is from pathos in the Latin, which means suffering. So, you've got to have a little patience. You remember Reggie Harris? Kim and Reggie were here. They've been here a couple times. They were here at MLK Sunday a couple years ago. I've known them uh, for a long time. And Reggie, uh, the two of them are a duo that travel the world and sing. And they're this fantastic... Uh, both uh, performers and writers, and Reggie's a wonderful songwriter, so whenever I get a chance to spend some time with him, you know, I always want to pull up my guitar and go, hey, hey, Reggie, I wrote a song. <laughs> Here, listen to this. And then I, you know, sing the song for him, and he's always really, you know, good to me. Wow, that's wonderful, that's, that's great then. So what do you got, Reggie? You got something new? And then he pulls out the song, and it's like, whoa. Marvelous. Reggie said to me early on uh, when he realized I was uh, a songwriter, he said uh, as well, he said, if, if you want to be a songwriter, you have to let the idea of the song grow deep into you before the song actually comes to life. And I thought, yeah, there's the thing, right? Because right away the idea comes, you know, I get a little melody, da 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 You go, oh boy, that could be a song. But right there, but it's kind of on the surface of it, you know, you have to wait for it to lead you. You know that the the composer of the musical Hamilton, which has anybody here seen Hamilton? No, that's because the tickets are sold out for the next year and a half. That's how good this show is, the little poem. The writer took seven years to write this show. It took him one year to write one song. Yeah! Wow! Talk about patience. Talk about allowing the thing to go deep and to take root in you. And of course, that's the, that's the point here. Every turn in your life, when you run into something that doesn't feel like the love of that, stop. Be patient. Let it take The last one is the thorns choking. Ah! You're so dangerous to sit over there. I don't know about the choking part. I think what happens is that other leaves grow up around it. And they did. They crowd it out. You know, the plant gets crowded out. And so, well, there's not enough nourishment underground, there's not enough sunlight above the ground. When I think about that in terms of us as, as human beings, I think about the things that crowd out this, the love of God in, in our own lives. In my life, it's comparison with other people. It happens in my head, you know. You know, like I'm playing with Reggie, and, and uh, then when I'm done playing with him and hearing a couple of songs that he wrote, I want to like shut my guitar up, put it away for a month and a half. You know, I don't want to touch that thing. Well, that's not something that is comparison to see what it is. Or it works the other way. It works the other way. I, I can be working with someone of much lesser capability and experience than myself, and I can think, I can really write songs quite good. <laughs> but see, the problem is, it's not working out of this thing in here. It, it's working out of something external, you see. And so it, it, it crowds, crowds out this thing. And then there's the other stuff which you all know about, right? When life doesn't go the way you want it to go, when you don't achieve the kind of results that you want to achieve, and things happen, and that just overwhelms you, and they come in and they crowd you, and you're, you're not able to move ahead because you didn't win the thing that you wanted to win, or you lost something you wanted to hold on to. Can 
Nuts! 